Hey, Will, what's up? Are you at work today? I didn't hear you leave or anything. I must have been so out of it. I took the day off today. I really wasn't feeling it. It's Friday, you know, and I think I might have stayed up a little bit late last night chatting to my friend on the phone. I swear it was already getting light when I finally made it to bed. And then you were rolling around all over the place and shifting your pillow and stuff. I didn't think I was ever going to get any sleep. You know, it's so rude of you to take up so much space in the bed and disturb me the whole time by moving. You always go to sleep at 11 p.m. or something and sleep for eight hours. I never get that much sleep, and you still seem to think that you have the right to take up the whole bed. Why don't you try sharing sometimes? If you're going to keep on being so greedy, do you think we should just get separate beds and have done with it? Oh, hey, Helena. Yeah, you totally woke me up coming to bed at four in the morning smelling of alcohol, so I'm sorry if I was restless and couldn't get back to sleep after that. No, I don't think we should sleep in separate beds. It would be pretty embarrassing if anyone found out that we have different bedrooms like my grandparents. Here's an idea. If you want to get more sleep and not feel so exhausted that you can't work in the morning, maybe try going to bed at an ordinary time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm at work. Luckily, I got enough sleep before you came to bed, so I'm doing okay on one extra cup of coffee. Oh my goodness. I knew I should never talk to you about this stuff. You immediately just start preaching and trying to suggest that there is something wrong with the way I live my life. You're so boring, Will. Where are you going to wake up and realize you've only got one life, and you're wasting it going to work and being a loser with no friends? Anyway, I just text to give you a heads up. I'm going to my mom's house tomorrow morning, and I'll probably stay over. You're going to your mom's house tomorrow? Have you just decided that or something? Why wouldn't you give me a little more notice? I'm kind of fed up with only hearing a few hours before you decide to go off somewhere. It's just impolite. I need more warning. Besides, have you even told your mom that you're planning on visiting? Why do you need to go this time? Do you need her to do your laundry or something? No. Why would I need to tell my mom that I'm going? She's not going to have plans. She's 60-something now, and she lives by herself. And I'm not exactly visiting somewhere fancy. It's my childhood home. I have a key, and a fair amount of my stuff is still there. It's basically my house, so I can go whenever I want. I don't need to bother her beforehand by calling. I would probably be more of a pain in the butt than if I just turn up. She's always so busy with important company business that her phone always goes straight to voicemail. So if I call, I'll have to leave her a message and wait for her to notice and call me back the next time she has a spare five minutes. Which is usually after dinner. I really don't think it's worth it. But that's exactly what you said the other day. You gave everyone about five minutes notice and then just left to go and stay at your mom's. That's not a good habit to get into, Helena. Why do you think it's okay to keep making your mom accommodate you all the time? You're going to want her to cook for you and do your laundry, aren't you? Expecting her to plan her whole life around you all the time is so rude, especially when she's already so busy with work. I really think you should make an effort to tell her in advance if you're coming. She's going to have to prepare food and make sure she has enough groceries in the house and all sorts of things like that. Hasn't she already talked to you and told you that she doesn't like it when you just turn up unannounced? Gee, Will... If you're so concerned about my mom's feelings, why don't you just call her and tell her for me? I'm so busy getting ready and stuff today, I can't do it. I don't have the time to waste making a call and leaving message and stuff. If you think it's so important to keep her updated about my weekend plans, why don't you let her know I'm coming? I'm sure she'll just agree with me that it's fine. She'll probably answer the phone first time. She always does when I call her. It's not that time consuming to just say, hey, is it alright if I come over, is it? Well, if it's not going to take so long and she always answers the phone to you, what's the big deal? You do it! She obviously likes talking to you more than me. I can't do it because I'm tired and I'm going to take a nap and then I'll have to pack and leave. I don't understand why you would keep me awake all night and then be so annoying about this when I'm clearly too tired to function. I don't need this extra hassle, Will. I don't understand why you think you don't have the time to call your mom, but you've got plenty of time to be texting me right now to argue about it. If you can text and distract me from work, I'm sure you have the time to give her a ring, don't you? But you're obviously not going to, so I will try contact her. What am I going to say if she says she's busy and you can't go over there today? 
I don't want you to start complaining to me if she says no, and I'm not gonna try and convince her to let you go there if she doesn't want you to, okay? She has a company to run. Just call her and let me know what she says. She's not going to have plans. You'll see. Look, I don't have time for this garbage, so can you just text me again after? I'm going back to sleep. You're totally overthinking this, Will. No parent would turn down a visit from their kid. I'll bet she's dying to see me right now. When you're done calling her, let me know and I'll say I told you so. <laughs> you're such a loser, always nagging me to be more considerate and be careful of people's feelings. It's such a pain to have to listen to all of that every day. Don't you know how annoying you are? I've never met anyone as self-righteous as you are. Okay, go back to sleep then. I'll stop nagging you to be a better person. You're obviously fine as you are, right? I just got off the phone with your mom. I'm sorry, but I don't think it's happening. You'll have to choose another weekend to visit her. She told me you can't go over there tomorrow. She's going out. She promised to meet up with a neighbor for lunch and she's planning to be out all day. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. What on earth are you talking about? Lunch with her neighbor? She doesn't like any of her neighbors. Besides, she can go and meet with her neighbor any day of the week she wants. They live nearby, that's the whole point of neighbors. But I can't always make time to visit. I'm doing her a favor going all the way over there on my weekend. What's with her? Is she not happy that I'm visiting? Does she really think it's okay to prioritize some random stranger who lives near her over her only daughter? This is crazy. If she doesn't want me to come over, I'll tell her that's it. I am never going there again. Oh my goodness, Helena, calm down. First of all, she never said she's prioritizing her neighbor over you. But she made that plan ages ago, and it would be so rude of her to cancel now. And she also said she told you about this weekend last time you were there. Did you forget or did you just not listen to her when she was talking to you? You sound just like my dad. That's exactly what he used to say. I can't believe I married a guy exactly like my dad. Oh, gross! Whatever. If you have anything else to say to your mom, then you can go ahead and call her, okay? But I have to ask, weren't you supposed to be working this weekend? I thought your team rotated weekends and this weekend was your turn. You don't seem to have worked a weekend in a few months. Don't you think the other members of your team are going to start getting a little annoyed soon? I don't think it's been that long. No one is going to notice. They're all just working like normal. Nobody is interested in whether I'm there or not. Trust me. Besides, everyone knows I need my weekend rest so that I can give my all during the week. It's much better this way. And no one is going to argue with me since <laughs> my mom is the CFO of the company and basically does whatever she wants so I can get away with anything. I don't know why they make us go in on Saturdays, anyway. There's never anything interesting to do. It doesn't make any sense. It would be way better if they just scrapped the idea of working Saturdays altogether. Don't you agree? I don't know. My company is a little more easygoing. They're more likely to suddenly announce that we're all going home early on Fridays or something. You've got it so easy. You don't know how lucky you are. You know... I wouldn't even be working for this company if my mom wasn't one of the bosses. It's not like I really care about the company or anything. The work is super boring and I never meet anyone cool. But this sucks. If I can't go to my mom's house tomorrow, I'll be so bored. It'll just be me and you at home together. What are we even going to do? <laughs> you don't seem particularly excited to spend the weekend with me. Well, it's going to be pretty dull if it's just me and you sitting at home staring at each other. I actually wanted to do something on my day off, or go somewhere fun. Alright then, why don't we go out somewhere fun together? That might be interesting. We haven't been out anywhere as a couple for a long time, other than running errands together. All I do is go to work, go to the supermarket, and come home. It'd be nice to get out of the house for once. We could take a drive somewhere. You want me to spend the weekend driving around with you? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. I think I'll pass on that generous offer. Thanks very much. Going out with you would be beyond boring. I see you every day during the week. I don't know why you'd want to force me to spend the whole weekend with you as well. <laughs> Have some compassion for me. <laughs> wow, beyond boring? I was only trying to make a suggestion, Helena. There's no need for you to be so rude. 
We used to enjoy hanging out together at weekends, didn't we? I don't remember you thinking I was boring when we were dating. Well, I'm just stating facts. Maybe I was a better actor back then, or I was putting a little bit more effort into hiding my real feelings. Either way, we've been married for five years already. The days of having fun together are past us. We don't have anything to say to each other anymore. And where are we going to go around here that I haven't already seen? I don't want to just spend my life doing the same old stuff over and over again. You can do what you want. I think I'll take a little vacation by myself. I'll see you when I get back. Helena, you are being really rude right now. Do you think you could watch what you say? It's not very nice to suggest that I bore you. I seriously think you should treat me with more respect than this. Even if you don't feel like hanging out with me this weekend, maybe be a bit more sensitive about it. I mean, are you trying to say you don't want to hang out as a couple anymore at all? That is crazy. We're married and I think we should make more effort to act like it. Okay then, let's make an effort. What are we going to do if we go out together? Do you have any great ideas? Do you want to go on a date, like we're in high school or something? <laughs> or maybe you're thinking about taking me to a fun fair. <laughs> I really can't picture it. It wouldn't be any fun at the fair with you, would it? This is you we're talking about, after all. I think the most exciting date you ever took me on was hiking in the mountains, and we both know how that ended. Yeah, you took about 10 steps and then gave up, sat down and refused to move. We had our picnic about five meters from the car and then went home. So it sounds like you don't want to hang out and you're suggesting we sleep in separate beds. Um, are you sick of me? We haven't been on a single date or spent any time together like husband and wife since we got married. Is this the life you were hoping for when we got married? I'm sorry, I just don't understand why we got married if you don't even want to spend time with me either at home or outside of the house. Why are you asking me that? I thought it would be obvious. If you haven't noticed, I'm way more attractive than you are. Of course, there's another reason I married you, and it's not because you're such great company either. It's because you work high up at one of the places my mom does business with and you get paid a lot. One of these days, you might become CEO of that company and then it'll be cool because my husband will finally have a better job than either of my parents had. <sighs> Also, I figured, after a while, I probably won't have to work anymore because your salary will take care of both of us. But you insist on saving, so I still have to work. But you're not totally ugly, and you've got a nice body, so I'm putting up with it for now. You're just putting up with me because it makes financial sense to stay married? That is not a very kind thing to say. Why are you being so mean today? I don't know, maybe I'm just running out of patience these days. I'm tired of acting like we're having a great time together. You never act like that, though. You barely even speak to me after work. I just thought you liked being by yourself and that's what made you happy. So I'm just wondering why you've suddenly decided that today is the day you say a bunch of horrible stuff to me and tell me that you've been unhappy this whole time. Oh, come on, Will. You're acting like I've broken your heart. It's not such a big deal. You can't tell me you thought we were the happiest couple alive or something. And don't get me wrong, I know you have some good traits. I've stuck with you for five years or whatever it is. I know there's a lot more going for you than some loser guys. You're not dirty, for one thing. You cook most days and clean up after yourself, and you don't act like I'm your mother and I should be doing your laundry all day. I mean, you could do more around the house, but I get that you work a lot, so I can put up with that. But you also could get paid a little more, or get a promotion soon, that would be good. Obviously, I can see that being with you must have its benefits, but that doesn't mean I have to like you as a person and spend a bunch of time with you. You're great husband material on paper, I just don't think there's any spark in our relationship, and I don't want to waste my weekend trying to pretend there is. Fine, whatever, let's just drop it. I think I've heard enough about this now. It sounds like you wrote a list of reasons for and against marrying me. But I just want you to know, I think that it's only a seriously cruel and cold-hearted person who could say stuff like that to her husband. You don't care if you hurt my feelings, right? You don't think it's worth worrying about how I feel. OMG, Will, stop being such a baby about your precious feelings. 
<laughs> no, I don't care, and I really just wish you would shut up so I can go and get ready for my weekend without you. You're deluded if you think this is a good marriage, and you shouldn't start a conversation like this if you don't want to hear what I really think. Just be thankful I've taken the time to explain all of this to you now before you embarrass yourself even more by asking me to go on a date with you. Your whole reaction is just a great example of why I don't want to spend time with you. You're so weak and sad and whiny. If that's what you think, there is clearly no point in even trying to talk to you. I hope you have a nice weekend. I guess I'll see you when you get back, if you can stand my whining voice while I make you coffee in the mornings. We'll see, shall we? I might be able to stand you for long enough to eat my breakfast in the same room, I don't know. I do seriously think I'm going to start sleeping in the spare room, though. There's no point in us pretending we want to share a bedroom. It's a joke. You're not going to argue with that, right? I need my own room. If a woman says she doesn't want you in her personal space, you better respect that. One good thing about you is that you seem to understand how to respect an independent and powerful woman. I'm glad I don't have to teach you that. Okay, that's great for me, I suppose. I'll leave you to be powerful and independent then. I should be getting back to work. I'm guessing I'll see you on Sunday. Are you going to tell me where you're going and who you're with? Helena, you're not going to tell me then? Okay, well, have fun doing whatever you're doing. Hey, Helena, it's getting late. Are you on your way home yet? I called you a few hours ago, but you didn't answer. Where are you? I called your office earlier as well, but your manager said that you left on time and you said you were going home. But that was hours ago. I'm getting a bit worried about you. Text me back when you see this, okay? Oh my god, Will! You called my work? You're such a pain in the butt! Why would you do something like that? I am absolutely fine. I'm a grown adult, you know. I'm not a little kid who got lost on their way home from school or something. I wish you would just stay out of my business. It's so embarrassing when you call my office. People will start wondering what I'm doing after work and they'll talk about me when I'm not there. I really hate it when you do that. And stop calling my mom about it too. She gets so annoying because she starts texting and calling to find out where I am too. Well, people are already wondering what you're doing after work. I am one of those people. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm trying to make sure that you're okay. If you don't pick up the phone and you don't come home until late at night, obviously I'm going to start worrying about you. What else was I supposed to do? You don't tell me where you're going or who you're with. If you answered the phone or text me, I wouldn't have to call your work. Do you have any idea what the time is right now? If you'd come straight home from work, you would have been home hours ago. I don't need you to tell me what the time is. It's right here on my phone screen. I am not blind. Can you stop acting like my father, please? My life got so much easier when that guy died, but now here you are being just as much of a pain. I wish you would just shut your mouth and stay out of my private affairs. Don't you understand how annoying it is to keep having to repeat this to you all the time? I don't have to report every single one of my actions to you, do I? I don't have to let you know exactly where I am and who I'm with all the time. This behavior is so controlling and manipulative. Well, you might be the boss of your team at work, but you're not my boss. You don't have the right to check up on me. Helena, you're completely overreacting. I'm not trying to boss you around or check up on you. It's late and I was worried. You left work four hours ago and nobody I know has seen you since. And I didn't hear from you all day at work either. I think it's perfectly reasonable for me to ask around in that situation. For all I know, you could have been in an accident on the way home from work. Just one text would have been enough to put my mind at rest. Then I wouldn't have had to call anyone. You could have just written, hey, I'm busy tonight and I'll be home late. You don't have to share all your secrets with me if it doesn't concern me. All I need to know is whether you're going to be home for dinner or not. Well, I'm not going to be home for dinner. I'm having dinner out. It's not a big deal or shady secret or anything, okay? I hope you don't have a problem with me going out after work to have dinner. It's not a crime to relax after a long day, is it? No, I don't have a problem with it. It's fine. The only problem is if you don't tell me beforehand, it's worrying, but it's also an issue because I end up wasting food. I made dinner for you two, and now you're not here to eat it. 
It's just common decency to let me know if you're not going to be here so I don't cook too much food and end up throwing it away. So you just need to let me know what is going on, to stop me from worrying and bothering my mom and your boss, and to make sure that I don't make you dinner by mistake. I really don't think it's too much to ask. Just one text message is enough. It ought to take you only five seconds. But if I decide suddenly that I want to change my plans, like tonight, I don't have time to go all through my phone book and tell everyone I know so that you don't worry. I'm not going to all that trouble just so you don't waste a few pasta shapes or something. It doesn't make sense. I mean, this evening, I didn't even decide I was going out for dinner until after you probably started cooking, so it would have been so pointless to text you about it. And what if I say I'm going out but then change my mind at the last minute and decide to go home for dinner? It's better to make sure you always have my dinner prepared, just in case. You don't know if I might need it. So if I make it and you don't need it, are you going to pack it for your lunch and take it to work the next day? Or you could freeze whatever is left over and have it another time when I'm not there. How can I have it when you're not here if you don't tell me when you're not going to be here? I'm supposed to be cooking fresh every night just in case you come home, right? Oh, for goodness sake, I'm so tired of all this arguing and complaining. Can you give me a break? I'm trying to have dinner and you're driving me crazy with this. You seem to have forgotten that I'm not like you. I like socializing and being out of the house. You don't have any friends, so you sit around at home watching TV. It's like you can't understand that some people like to have the freedom and spontaneity to just decide what they want to do when they want to do it, without planning everything 24 hours in advance. We both work, so it should be fine for me to go out whenever I want. I am not spending your money, am I? And we're not poor anyway. Besides, you know, it's Friday night, right? How can you expect me to just come straight home to eat your boring food and sit on the sofa watching TV? Ah, oh, you act like a grandma, Will. Which is fine if that's what you want, but just don't expect me to join in with you. You've totally ruined my night with your stupid complaining. I'm not just sat at home waiting for you because I don't have anything better to do. I'd go out, but you never invite me. And how can I make plans with my friends if I never know when I'm supposed to be cooking for you? Uh, this is ridiculous. I don't even know why I bother. I don't know either. Feel free to just stop bothering me right now. I meant I don't know why I bother to cook for you and clean up after you. We agreed I'd do dinner most nights because I'd get home earlier, but it's not like I want to do it. But I'm also not sure why I bother arguing with you because you barely ever listen, and I'm not sure if you understand what I'm saying all of the time. Are you calling me stupid now? Look, just leave me alone, will you? I am so done with your garbage today. I'll be home later, but don't wait up because I don't even want to see you. I'll sleep in the spare room. That's fine, all your stuff is in there anyway. Have a great time! Aren't you working from home today? I thought your company was trialing that thing to only make you go into the office on Mondays and Thursdays or something. Today's Wednesday, right? Hey, Helena. Yes, today is Wednesday. I'm at the office because there was a problem in IT and I can't access my server remotely. Is there something wrong? You don't usually text to find out where I am at lunchtime on a weekday. Aren't you at work? I don't understand. Did you go into the office this whole week or just today? What time did you leave? You were still at home when I left, weren't you? If you're going to the office, you usually leave before me. That's why I thought you were at home. I thought I could work from home today, but I found out at about quarter past nine that it wasn't going to happen. So I packed up and came to the office. What's going on? Why are you being so weird about this? Are you at home right now wondering why I'm not there? What does it matter if I am home? It's my house and I can be there if I want to, can't I? I guess so. I'm just a bit confused. You left for work before me and now you're texting me to find out where I am? Did you come home from work early? Uh, what happened? Are you sick or something? No, I was just tired and my boss was being annoying, so I decided to come home early. I just worked a half day and took the rest of the day off. Can you believe this? This guy, Steve, on my team seems to think it's okay to exclude me from meetings, so he actually took me off the shared calendar we have. That is so out of order, right? He's totally shutting me out. It's like workplace harassment or something. I'm pretty sure I could sue him. 
So my boss is wondering why I'm not up to date with everything, and the whole reason is because Steve and the rest of my team aren't even letting me come to meetings. Oh, okay, I, I see. That sounds like it could get complicated for you. Did your boss say anything about it? Does he know Steve did that? Yeah, he was being such a pain in the butt about me keeping to my work hours. He should know I always stay extra if I'm late. He sees me there all the time. But he said it's still my responsibility to know when meetings are, even if I'm not getting notifications from the calendar. I don't understand how I'm supposed to do that. If I'm tired and I come in late, I don't get to hear if there's a briefing or anything. They should just send out the information in an email so no one misses it. Why are you always so tired that you can't make it to work on time, though? It's not like your work hours have changed recently. They're the same hours that everyone else has, so if they can keep their times, then you should be able to as well. It sounds to me like if you don't make it to work on time, you're gonna start to get a disciplinary or something. Well, I'd like to see them try to discipline me. Or fire me. My mom is the CFO, remember? She'll put them right. I should have known not to talk to you about this. I'm already tired and you're just going to get all preachy and side with my boss, aren't you? What's the point in even being married to you if you don't stick up for me? Now I'm home and you're not even here to make lunch. What am I going to do by myself? I can't see anything in the refrigerator. I might as well go out to eat again. The breakfast things are still dirty too. It's like living in a pigsty. Couldn't you have cleaned up before you left? I didn't have time. It's your mess as well, you know? All you have to do is stack the plates and mugs in the dishwasher. I was gonna do it at lunchtime, but I had to leave. If you're hungry, there's some salad stuff, or you could cook yourself some bacon. I am not cooking. I'm too tired for that. I'd probably set fire to the whole house and then we'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? Can't you just tell your boss there's an emergency at home and take the day off too? You're always talking about how we need to spend more time as a couple. I don't think I can take the day off just because you need someone to cook lunch and listen to you complain about being treated unfairly at work. Sorry. It's not too hard to make yourself a sandwich, is it? Or you could just go out like you said. I have to go. I'm behind on work today because of the server thing and I need to catch up. Or I'll have to stay late all week. Are you serious? I really need you right now. This is your chance to prove that you're a good husband to me. Haven't you been begging me to treat you like a partner for ages instead of just ignoring you? Well, here I am asking for you to come and look after me in my time of need. I thought you enjoyed going out more, though. You don't want to be stuck at home all day, do you? Why don't you jump in the car and go and do something? That way, you'll be able to take your mind off of work, and after you've got some rest, hopefully, you'll feel more refreshed tomorrow. I can't just drop everything and come back from work. You're always talking about how many friends you have. Can't one of them go to lunch with you? Or you could order food and have it delivered. So even if you don't want to go out and don't want to cook, you still won't starve. But I don't even have the energy to decide what to eat. And if we have stuff for salad here, I'd really just appreciate it if you came and sorted it for me. Why don't you just come in your lunch break? You can eat here with me and then go back to work. It doesn't take that long for you to get home, does it? Besides, you're always nagging me about using up the food we have in the house, so why are you suggesting I order in when you have stuff to eat in the refrigerator? Didn't I literally just tell you that I'm really busy at work? I really don't have time for this conversation, let alone driving back home just to throw some salad stuff in a bowl for you. Oh, come on, Will. You know, sometimes I think you're just trying to make my life more difficult than it already is. I'm having a really rough day, and you're saying you don't have time to come and help me out? How can you call yourself my husband? You should be making me your top priority, right? That is really unfair, Helena. You've never acted like I'm a priority for you, and now you're accusing me of neglecting you? It's the middle of a workday right now. Work has to be my priority right now, unless you're seriously ill or something, which you are clearly not. But you can't make out that your job is your only responsibility. You also promised to look after my needs when you married me, right? Why don't you care about me? You're being so disappointing right now. It's like you don't want to comfort me when I've had a bad day. If I can't rely on you to help me out when I need you, what do I even stick around for? All I'm asking you to do is spend an hour or so of your time making me feel better. I don't know what I've been doing for the past five years staying married to a guy who only thinks of himself and spends most of his time acting like a 
patronizing jerk. Listen, Helena, this is unfair. You're totally distorting the situation. I'm not refusing to help you out in your hour of need. What I'm refusing to do is drop everything and rush home just to make you a salad. You know I'm not your housekeeper or your servant, right? You barely ever do any cooking or cleaning yourself. It's always someone else who does it for you. It's not fair of you to heap it all back on me and say I'm not doing my job of taking care of you. I cook for you all the time and you never do anything to thank me. You're being completely irrational and unreasonable right now, especially since most of the time you don't even care if I'm there or whether I cook dinner for you. Well, I am giving you the opportunity right now to change that. Maybe if you come home and help me out today, I'll be more thankful to you in the future. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Just don't say I never treat you like a husband anymore because here I am asking you to spend time with me and you're refusing. I don't even want you to come home and have lunch with me anymore. You ruined it. I'll see if my friend wants to go out and get something to eat with me. I hope you don't regret not taking your chance with me today. What on earth is wrong with you? You're totally unhinged today. I'm used to you being rude and disrespectful, but I feel like today you've really left the world of logic and reason behind. Can we just go back to leaving each other alone? We've been getting along fine for the last few weeks, but that's basically because we barely talk. I've made my peace with it. I am done putting all of my energy into a relationship that barely exists anymore. I don't want to spend my life being berated by you whenever I don't do exactly what you want. It's unfair. Oh my god, listen to yourself. You're like a little girl who's afraid of being yelled at. If you weren't such a loser, I wouldn't have to teach you how to behave to a woman all the time. No one likes to be nagged and preached at all the time. I just want someone who respects my independence and looks after me when I need it. Honestly, Will, you're so lucky to even have me. I can't imagine anyone else wanting to marry you. And if you didn't have such a great salary, I don't think I would have bothered either. But it turns out it's not enough to make up for your other shortcomings. All you do is criticize me and make me feel like I'm not good enough for you. When really it should be the other way around. You'd be nothing without me. If it wasn't for me agreeing to marry you, you'd be nowhere near where you are with work right now. And you wouldn't have this house or half of the stuff in it, right? Where did you forget that? Well, if that's how you really feel, maybe you should get married again. You can prove my success is all down to you by making your new husband into the next CEO of his company. I'm sure I'll be homeless and unemployed by then. So, you want a divorce? Is that what you're saying? I guess it's time to see who's right. Well, I definitely can't take much more of this behavior from you. It's driving me crazy. I can't spend the rest of my life with someone who insults me, thinks I'm boring and shows no respect for me at all. If you're going to treat me like trash and talk down to me, let's just forget about it. I don't want to be with you. I've pretty much forgotten why I wanted to be with you in the first place. You're nothing like the person I thought I was marrying. Well, good luck then. I don't think you realize what's going to happen if you break up with me, do you? I'm not so sure what you're getting at. What do you think is going to happen? You clearly haven't thought this through, but I have. I know this won't end well for you at all. Have you forgotten about our prenup already? You'll be on your own for the rest of your life with only what you can earn. You'll have to start all over again from zero. I haven't forgotten about our prenup, and I think starting again from zero is probably preferable to what I have to endure while I'm with you. Well, you'll always be alone after this. No one is going to be interested in you now you've lost the body you had when we were dating. You never go to the gym anymore, so you're really not as attractive as you used to be. You know that, right? And you were never that hot. Okay, sure. All of that is just more evidence that I'm better off alone than with you. You're really not a very nice person, are you? You have no sense of compassion at all, and I seriously doubt that you've ever loved me. Have you ever loved anyone? All you ever do is make fun of me and make me feel like an idiot. Well, I wouldn't make fun of you so much if you didn't make it so easy. You're so whiny and girly. Making fun of that is just a knee-jerk reaction. But you admit that you've let yourself go, right? I never stopped taking care of myself, so I'm pretty sure I look exactly like I did when we got married. We can just get a divorce and I'll get over it and move on to someone new, but you'll probably be alone forever after that. Are you still sure you want to take that risk? I don't want you to come crying to me when you realize what a mistake you've made. 
I won't hang around waiting for you to want me back. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I just want to be done with whatever torture you want to keep inflicting on me. Hey, so now that we've decided to get a divorce, how long are you planning on staying in my house? I think it'll be easier for both of us if you just move out. Then we don't have to keep trying to avoid each other whenever we're both home. It's awkward. I don't understand. What are you talking about? Don't you think it'll be easier for us to apply for a divorce if we're not living together? You said the other day you wanted to get a divorce, so why don't you go ahead and move out? Did you already forget that conversation? It wasn't so long ago. I thought you'd remember. Of course I remember that conversation. I just don't know why it means I should be moving out. Didn't you mean what you said? I'm not the kind of person who just says stuff for effect, Will. When I say I'm getting a divorce, I mean it. You can't just decide now that you didn't mean it. I knew this would happen. I bet you realized you were making a mistake, didn't you? Okay, calm down. I know I said the other day that I wanted a divorce, but we haven't even discussed what's going to happen to all of our stuff. We can't just apply for a divorce without talking about it first. We need to hire lawyers and sit down and discuss everything with them. We've been married a very long time and we have a prenup to consider. I don't want to rush into anything, so I've been taking my time to think about how I want things to go. I assumed that's what you were doing as well? Well, I don't see what else there is to discuss. We clearly can't stand each other anymore and we don't want to live together. Like I said, living separately will help our case when we apply for the divorce, won't it? So you should move out of my house already. I've always been the one to make the decisions in this relationship because you're too much of a scaredy cat to even choose what wallpaper you want, aren't you? So, if we're breaking up, I'm going to be the one who decides how that goes. You might have set the ball rolling, but I've realized that I agree with you. So, I'll be proceeding with this the way I want to. Do you understand? You can have your opinions, but I'll do what I want regardless. I don't think that's how it works, Helena. We both get an equal say in how the divorce works out. If we can't agree, a judge will have to decide what happens. I know this is a private decision we're making about our relationship, but if it's difficult for us to agree on terms of the divorce, we'll need to get lawyers. You can't just make up all the decisions and expect me to go along with whatever you want, okay? I'm not as indecisive as you seem to think. I know what I want. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Will. Why waste money on a lawyer and an expensive court case when we have a prenup that tells us what's going to happen? If there's anything we don't agree on or that's vague about it, we'll just try and decide by ourselves. You can trust me to be fair. I really don't think so. You're not listening to me again, are you? Why is it you never listen to me when I'm trying to say something important? Because you always talk rubbish and it never makes any sense. It's always about being cautious or not offending anyone and it's so pointless. I'm going to act in the way that best benefits me. That's the logical way to behave, right? And if it benefits you too, then lucky you. If not, then that's a shame, but it's not going to change what I want to do. People always say that women are too emotional and can't listen to reason, but that's not the case for us, is it? You've always been the one who lets their feelings get in the way of a logical decision. But I'm not going to let you mess this up with your desperate need to always do things the proper way and take care of everyone's stupid feelings. How can you talk about logical decisions in such an illogical way like that? Don't you see that you're the one that doesn't make any sense? This isn't about taking care of people's feelings at all. It's about legal requirements for getting a divorce. It's a process, Helena. You actually can't just have everything your way. You have to discuss each matter with me and wait until we've reached an agreement before you can do anything. Last time we talked, you were wondering how life was going to be for me after the divorce, and you said you weren't sure how I'd cope, right? Well, what about you? Are you prepared to deal with the consequences of the divorce? Have you thought it through, and do you really understand what it will mean for you? <laughs> of course. You know nothing is going to change for me at all. I'll still have everything I need. As far as I can tell, you're the one with something to lose. I'm not sure what you mean. Are you talking about something specific? Your income isn't that much, so as far as I can tell, I don't stand to lose much if we're not together. You really don't realize it yet. You're going to lose something seriously valuable once we're divorced. I'm not sure I want to tell you unless you change your mind. What on earth are you talking about? There's nothing that valuable that I can think of. 
Our prenup says that if we divorce, we'll each take the things we own separately, right? That's why we've always taken care to keep our finances as separate as possible, in case this happens. But even with that, we have to sit down and make sure that we're both aware of what the other owns and what things are shared ownership and work out how to divide those. I don't know why you're suggesting there's valuable stuff that I'm going to lose because we haven't even talked about it yet. And I can't think of anything huge that you own. Oh, can't you? No. And once that stuff is decided, we have to agree to it and sign the divorce papers. You're not exactly going to be able to trick me into losing anything I don't want to. I'm not trying to trick you. I just think you haven't considered all of the possibilities. You might not be able to claim ownership of some stuff. Okay, you obviously think you've got something I really want. But if you're going to continue being so vague, I think I'll just let it go. I'm already talking to my lawyer about this, so I'm sure it'll get sorted soon. And I think since we've been using separate bedrooms, we should be able to prove the marriage hasn't been working for a while. I don't think it's necessary for one of us to move out, but if you're really not comfortable living with me, then you could go ahead and ask your mom if you can stay with her. Why should I move out? You were the one who suggested we separate. I didn't say I was uncomfortable, just that it was awkward, which it is. I just thought I was going to be making your dreams come true since you wanted so badly to get away from your cold-hearted wife. Even if we have been living in separate bedrooms, I'm sure it'll be helpful to our case if one of us moves out, and it should obviously be you. But why, though? You can't just decide that I should move out and expect me to accept it and start packing. Have you even spoken to your mom about this yet? What's she going to say if one of us suddenly moves out of the house without talking to her? I don't know. She'll just have to deal with it and move on. It's not like she has much choice. She'll just have to try and work with your company anyway. This is what I mean. You're always thinking about people's feelings as if that's the most important thing, but it's not. It doesn't matter what my mom thinks. Have you told your parents about this? What did you say to them? Yeah, I tell them most of the stuff that happens to me. You know I call them once a week, usually. I told them a couple of days after that conversation we had. I just explained that we both said and thought and agreed that separating was probably the best option for me. They're kind of worried about what you're going to do without me, but you seem pretty confident you can handle it, so I told them not to waste any energy over that. Anyway, it doesn't matter what my parents said. The point is that you're the one suggesting that one of us moves out. If it's important to you, you should go. You're being an idiot, Will. Why won't you listen to me? You've asked for a divorce, so I'm giving it to you on my own terms. You should leave. What makes you think that you have the right to make up the terms of our divorce? Because you don't. We have to agree on everything. If I say I'm not leaving, then you can't make me. Do you want to place a bet on that? Of course I can get you to move out of my house. Just you wait and see. Okay, but how are you going to do that? I haven't done anything to threaten you or break the law, have I? I really don't see why I should have to leave instead of you. It doesn't make any sense. You're being so stupid. This house belongs to me, idiot. You just said that the terms of our prenup said that we each take what we own, right? I'm the rightful owner of our house, and if you don't leave right away, then I'm going to have you evicted. In fact, I think you should try and stay for as long as you can because it'll be more fun to have the police come and force you to leave. I wonder if they'll put you in handcuffs. <laughs> I hope I'm there to take photos of that. <laughs> Are you really going to stand there and call me an idiot over this? I honestly don't know what to say. Uh, it's a little embarrassing. You're so right. This is embarrassing. How could I have ever settled for a loser like you? Just get out of my house. No, if we're going by the terms of our prenup, then you're the one who needs to leave, Helena. I'm embarrassed for you, honey, and <laughs> not myself. Are you serious? Do you think you have the right to order me out of my own house? <laughs> it's hilarious. This is my place. If you don't get out, I'm totally calling the cops. And if you still think it's your house, you can try to prove that to a judge. You can try calling the cops, but they'll probably just issue a fine for wasting their time. This is not your house. I can't believe that you've forgotten. Forgotten what? My mom bought this house. I remember it so clearly. She paid the money and took out a mortgage and everything. No, I knew you weren't paying attention. This is why you have to listen to what people are saying to you. 
Your mom put down the deposit as a wedding present, yeah, but she wanted to put the ownership and mortgage in both of our names. But you complained, saying that you didn't want the responsibility of having a mortgage and paying all that money each month. So I agreed to take on the mortgage by myself. But my mom gave the deposit as a wedding gift, so that still makes it partly my house, right? The gift was to both of us? You can't trick me out of this house. It obviously belongs to both of us, and I'll fight you for it in court. No, I'm not done yet. It was a gift at first, but I thought that if I was paying the mortgage, I should pay your mom back for the deposit as well. Then I knew I would own the house outright, and no one would be able to question my ownership of it. I even told you what I was planning on doing, and you said it was fine. I should just go ahead and do whatever I wanted about it. Are you serious? So you've been paying the mortgage and paying my mom back as well? How can you afford that? I just don't spend that much money otherwise. You know I don't go out much or buy a lot of stuff, and my salary is pretty great. I get by just fine. It's expensive for sure. Uh, with the house in my name, I have to pay all the property tax and everything, but it's going to be worth it when it's all paid for. And now I have the added satisfaction of seeing your face when you leave, and I have this house all to myself. I can't believe this. You're such a jerk, Will. You're going to throw me out of my own house and sit there and laugh about it? I bet you're just bluffing to get me to leave, aren't you? We'll just have to take this to court and see who really gets the house. I'm not bluffing. I have all the paperwork to prove it. You can check it if you want to. There is no way you would have got that past me. I would never have let you just buy the house off my mom and pay the mortgage without me knowing. This can't be true. I need this house way more than you do. You'll just have to agree to sell me your half. I did try to include you in all the decisions I made about it, but you never listened to anything because you said I was being boring. It's really sad for you if you need this house, but I'm sorry. There's no your half and my half. I own the whole thing, and it's all in my name. You might not like it, but I have no intention of giving up the house. Even if you were to come up with money to buy it off me, I'd probably refuse. I've put too much money and effort into this house just to give it up. Whether we're married or not, I'm gonna live here. All of my stuff is here and I have my home office all set up how I want it. It's comfortable and close to my work. I am not leaving. This is terrible. I am not going to let you get away with this. I'll fight for it. I'll hire a clever lawyer and we'll find a way to take that house from you. You probably think I've been spending all of my money, but I have plenty saved up. I'll get the best lawyer I can afford, and I'm sure my mom will help me out too. Okay then, I look forward to seeing you try that. It doesn't really matter how smart or expensive your lawyer is, they won't be able to change the terms of our prenup. It's all settled and the fact is, the house belongs solely to me. You've got no chance. But why do you even want this house so much? I'm sure it doesn't mean that much to you. Is there a secret reason you need it? Are you hoping someone else will come and live with you after I've left? I don't know what you're talking about. What are you trying to imply? I'm not cheating on you. I don't have anyone waiting to take your place or anything. Are you sure? I've got my sources at your company and those little birdies tell me you're quite the office flirt. Maybe you don't have anyone lined up already, but I'm sure you're not gonna waste your time once we're divorced, are you? You'll be straight out looking for someone new to cook and clean for you, isn't that right? Well, let me tell you, there aren't many guys like me around. Most men are the opposite, in fact. They're all looking for someone to do their laundry and cook their dinner. You're never gonna find another guy who wants to work full-time and then come straight home and cook for you. Oh, come on, Will. You're not so special, and I can cook and clean. I just choose not to because you're such a pushover. In fact, I think you'll have more problems finding someone who is generous enough to eat your gross food like I do. Well, in that case, I certainly hope you're not planning on living with your mom for any length of time, are you? I expect once you realize you're definitely not having this house, you'll try living off her charity for as long as you possibly can, right? I don't want you to get your hopes up, though. I'm not sure she'll let you hang around for long. Why not? Well, she's been refusing to let you go over there and stay recently, right? Are you sure there isn't more to it than the excuse of having other plans? No, why should there be any other reasons? That's just how things turned out recently with her calendar. Oh, is it? I feel like there might be another reason. Do you know something? What is it? 
It better not be something to do with work, because I don't know why you would know before me. Well, you haven't exactly been the perfect wife or daughter, to be honest. Uh, the amount of times you made me call her on your behalf, I think she started to get tired of it. We both did. And then we got to talking about you and the kind of pain in the butt stuff you always made us do. I'm sure you thought your mom would always be on your side in any situation ever, right? You always say it's impossible for the company to fire you because of her. But I'm not sure you should be so confident about how much support she is willing to give you. You might get a nasty shock. That's ridiculous. My mom has always been so easy to manipulate. She'll do anything for me if I tell her to. Even if she says to you that she finds me as annoying as you do, I'm sure I can convince her to take my side after all. If I want to stay at her house, I'll be fine. I have a key and everything. I actually doubt it, Helena. Your mom said to me on more than one occasion that she is done with you. I think she was just putting up with you for my sake, to be honest. That's a ridiculous thing to say. Why would she put up with me for your sake? What would she achieve by that? I don't know. I think she probably just feels sorry for me. But she doesn't want to make things awkward for me at work because we're clients, so she can't dump you while we're married. I'm guessing that when she finds out we're getting a divorce, she'll drop you faster than I can. That's not fair. Are you serious? This is all your fault, Will. I bet you've turned her against me, haven't you? Not at all. You managed to ruin your relationship with her all by yourself. I think it's mainly because you refuse to acknowledge how busy she is. Whenever you go there, you expect her to do all of the cooking and to take care of your laundry and everything, right? But she doesn't have time for that on the weekends now. Well, you can't start making out like this is my fault. If you just did my laundry along with yours, I wouldn't have to take it home. You are absolute trash, Helena. Why are you being so obstinate about this? Your laundry is your responsibility. But that's not going to be the only reason your mom wants to get rid of you, is it? Not only are you lazy and messy, but you're also rude to your mom's friends when you're there. And you totally take advantage of her position at work. She is sick and tired of hearing your manager complain about you, because apparently whenever he has a problem with you, you always tell him to take it to your mom. Anyway, the point is that once you're out of this house, don't count on being able to go back to your mom's house, okay? You'll probably need to look for your own place. And knowing this, I'm sure you're not too eager to rush the divorce through and find out which one of us has to move out of this house. I'm not sure I understand. So you're saying that once we're divorced, you think I'll be homeless? My mom won't let me stay at all? <laughs> this is a complete mess. You've done this on purpose, haven't you? I bet you're going to throw me out and enjoy watching me suffer. You've basically ruined my life, Will. I hope you're happy with yourself. If I was, I don't think anyone would blame me. But I can't take credit for ruining your life. You've treated everyone around you like jerks. This is your own fault. You keep trying to paint yourself as the victim in this situation, and you haven't once suggested that you could behave better, have you? Do you even realize what a horrible person you've been to me? Remember how you belittled me and called me boring? You laughed when I tried to suggest we hang out like a husband and wife. Why would anyone blame me if I enjoy watching you suffer after this? You're delusional, Will. I'm the one who's set to lose their home and family over all this. Of course, it's cruel of you to enjoy this. Well, just you wait. I'm planning on hiring the best lawyer I can. I'll put you and my mom in your places. I'll make you pay through the nose for this divorce. Only your house and your family? I really hope for your sake that's all you're about to lose. But I'm a little worried you haven't considered all the consequences of alienating me and your mom like this, especially your mom. What are you getting at? She's not going to let me live with her. What more can she do? I don't owe her any money or anything. No, but you won't be able to send your boss to her every time you get to work late or mess something up because you weren't paying attention in meetings. I'm quite interested to know how long you can keep your job once your mom stops having to protect you. Maybe if you tried your best to be a model employee, you could hold on to it. But I've heard you say a bunch of times how much you hate that job, right? Yeah, so? I don't even care if I lose my job after this. I'll get something else. I'm not even worried about that. Oh, okay. That's fine then. I'm sure you've totally got everything under control. What job are you planning on getting next? Do you have any transferable skills? Because I doubt you'll find anything in the same industry. 
What does it matter to you? You're not interested in my future plans, are you? Just leave me alone. No, you're right. Once we're divorced, it won't be any of my business anymore. But you also won't be able to come to me for help either. If you don't find another job, you'll be homeless and unemployed. Then what will you do? This isn't fair. I shouldn't be getting punished just for getting a divorce from you. My work life and my personal life are two separate things. But I'm not going to be homeless and unemployed. I'll figure everything out. I'm not as useless as you seem to think I am. That's fine then. As you say, it's none of my business anymore, and I don't think I'll worry too much about it. I am just pleased with the idea that pretty soon, I won't have to think about you at all. When you get a lawyer, you can get them to contact my lawyer, okay? Then we won't have to talk to each other at all. Wait, so you're not going to move out, right? Are we supposed to just keep on living together all awkwardly like this? I don't know, I didn't think it was such a problem, but now that you mention it, it would probably be better for our divorce case if we lived separately. Where are you gonna go? What do you mean by that? I'm not going anywhere, I don't have anywhere to stay, remember? Oh, right, uh, what about your car? We both have our car, so you're probably gonna be able to keep yours in the divorce. Why don't you just stay there until you can find a new place? I'm not saying you have to move out straight away, but it would probably be better, wouldn't it? I am not going to sleep and get ready for work in my car. That's a crazy idea. Then you should probably start looking for a new place straight away. Uh, do you want me to give you a hand in packing your stuff? This is a nightmare. Are you sure this is all real? I thought for sure I will at least get the house. You're not dreaming. I'm totally serious about this. You said you had savings, right? If you want my advice, you should get yourself a lawyer as soon as you can. But don't spend too much money. You'll need some to rent an apartment or something. And get your behind into work and become a model employee. You need that job, Helena. And the faster you start taking it seriously, the better. Will you ever stop preaching to me and acting like you're better than me? I am telling you, I've got everything under control. Aren't you satisfied with just taking everything from me? You also need to act like you know how to live my life better than me? I'm trying to make sure that you don't lose everything you've ever worked for over this stupid attitude problem. If you just suck it up and admit that you've been acting like a jerk, you might still manage to keep your job. We both know that you're not totally useless once you try. Can't you see that I'm trying to be generous here? I'm not trying to make you feel like an idiot. But I don't owe you anything, Helena. If you say you don't need my advice, I'll just be quiet and let you deal with everything. So... Do you think if I apologize to my mom and my boss that I'll be able to keep my job? What if I apologize to you? What if I say I don't think it's too late for us after all? Maybe we still have a chance to make this work. We could try just talking about it. We're not divorced yet, right? It sounds like it might just all be much more trouble than it's worth, don't you think so? Not at all. Uh, don't you remember saying how happy and relieved I was to think I was getting a divorce? Regardless of what property and money I'm left with afterwards, the important part is that I don't have to deal with your hateful treatment of me anymore. But if you don't care about any of that stuff, why are you ruining my life over it? I need the house, can't you just let it go? Well, no, it belongs to me. It'll still be mine after the divorce, and if I wanted you to have it, I would have to go through a huge process of transferring ownership to you. I'm sorry, but I just don't care enough about you to do that. You've been nothing but horrible to me for the past five years. Why would I want to gift you my house? I've given you so many chances to be a better partner to me. You just kept ignoring me and treating me like trash. So now that time has come to say goodbye to this awful marriage and move on. I'm gonna make it as fast and easy as possible. But don't you think I deserve just one last chance? I really think things could change between us. It wasn't awful when we were dating, right? No, but you said that was because you were pretending to like me when we were dating. I'm sorry, I'm not going through this all again. The only thing that will happen is that you will start taking advantage of me again, and I'll regret giving you another chance. But I don't think I can live without you, Will. I'll promise to never be mean to you again. I'll be so good to you, I'll cook and clean all the time, I swear! Believe me, you can live without me. You'll have to. I'm not gonna change my mind. You're so lazy, I just know there's no way you could do the cooking and cleaning if there was a chance someone else was gonna do it for you. 
The only way you're gonna be doing that stuff for yourself is if there's no one else around to do it. And even then, you'll end up living in a complete mess and wasting all of your money on takeout. You're right. I really do need you in my life. I'd be hopeless on my own. Please don't leave me, Will. I don't want to go through with the divorce. Can we just talk about this some more? Absolutely not. This is already beyond the point of no return. We've both agreed to the divorce and we're basically living separately. I've got a lawyer and he'll be in touch about the terms of the prenup and the divorce arrangements pretty soon. Other than that, I really don't want any contact with you. I can't force you out of my house right now unless something goes really wrong. But after this conversation is over, I'm not going to answer any more of your messages or calls. You'll have to communicate through my lawyer. What? Will? I'm sorry! Please don't abandon me like this! I'll never survive! Please answer me, Will! Let's talk about this! Goodbye, Helena. I really wasn't intending to have Helena thrown out of our house, but after the end of our conversation about the divorce, she kind of lost it. She drove home and started going crazy at me. She was screaming and shouting, throwing things and trying to hit me, so I had to call the police. She was arrested and her mom had to go and pick her up from the police station. She never came back to our house to live. After a few days, her mom sent some relatives around to pick up Helena's stuff, and she stayed at her uncle's house after that until the divorce was finalized. It didn't take long to process once the ball was rolling, because the prenup was very clear about how we should divide our stuff. As expected, I was allowed to keep my house and everything else that belonged to me. Helena took her stuff, including her car, and I never have to see her again. Because of the incident with the police and everything that had happened before that, Helena got fired from her job. Her mom didn't even try to save her from that eventuality. I heard that she lived with her uncle for a few weeks until his wife got tired of her never doing anything around the house and they threw her out too. According to her mom, she's now living in a tiny apartment somewhere on the other side of the state. She got a job working in a convenience store and said she would do that while she looked for something better. But it's been quite a while now and nothing better has turned up for her. I'm quite enjoying being single again. It turns out a lot of the guys in my office are single and they never invited me out before because I was always busy at home. These days we go out way more and I'm getting to know everyone much better. Work is good and so far I'm feeling way better than I have for years. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content.